is going to be a second part of chapter one video for business seven accounting for small business in the first uh, video I covered the first section we defined accounting talked about career opportunities and identified the users of financial information in this chapter I will cover section two I will uh, list, compare and contrast the three types of business entities. We will describe the process used to develop GAP. So let's dive into it. You might have studied this information uh, about forms of business entities. Let me go right here. Uh, three types of business entities if you took the introduction to business course or business law course. So for some of you it will be just a review. So the three major legal forms of business entity include a sole proprietorship, one owner. This is what we study in this class. It will have the simplest accounting structure because of the simplicity of its ownership. So that's all we're going to study in this class. Partnerships we're not covering in this class. The structure is also quite simple. Instead of one owner, you have two or more. And then corporations we will cover in, in business 1A which is a financial accounting course. So this is the data I found where if you look at the number of businesses, almost three-fourths of all businesses are sole proprietorship. So by number, the most popular, of course, is the simplest uh, business form of business entity is sole proprietorship. 19% of corporations, 7% of partnerships. But if you look at the proportion of revenue, so revenue is the word that, um, that we define sales. We can call them revenues or sales. Any inflows of assets that the business earns as a result of operations. So this is not profit. Profit would be revenue minus expenses gives you profit, or we will call it net income. If we're in the negative, we'll call it net loss. So revenue is the same as sales. So in accounting, you will notice a lot of, and that's a problem for new students to the field, is that the same term, the same concept has two or three different names, and we use them interchangeably. And one business will call it income, another business will call the same thing profit. One business calls it revenue, another business calls it sales, but it's the same thing. And so you can see that corporations are so large that even though they represent only 19% of uh, the number of businesses in the USA, they make 89% of revenue. They earn 89% of sales. And sole proprietorships are so huge in numbers but tiny in the sales department. They only uh, make, make up 6% of business revenue. All right, so sole proprietorship, here is a definition. It's uh, a business entity owned by one person, and that person is legally responsible for the debts. Uh, this is another term, debt. I am sure you know what it is. It's the amount, it's the claim of others against our assets. We will actually call debts liabilities in accounting, and we will use those two terms interchangeably. And taxes of the business. Uh, this is a, a sole proprietorship is the oldest and simplest form. I listed here the advantages of a sole proprietorship. And probably the biggest advantage is that you keep all the profits after you pay taxes and you are your own boss. Disadvantages are right here, and the biggest disadvantage is this unlimited personal liability. So, in the, in the eyes of law, you and your business are the same entity. So, you are responsible for all liabilities of your business. So, if your business owes money, then the IRS can go after your personal assets, after your car, after your house. There is no legal separation between your business assets and your personal assets. For financial purposes, we will separate them so that the owner knows how much she makes from the business versus she might still work or have another business. So we will separate all of them. But from a legal point of view, you and your business are the same. A partnership is a business entity owned by two or more people who are legally responsible for the debts and taxes of the business and again you can see advantages and because you have more than one owner it's um, you have complementary skills you have 
more ability to invest and borrow, then partnerships survive four times longer than sole proprietorships. And these are disadvantages. You still have unlimited liability, but now it's shared among the partners. And another biggest one are these interpersonal conflicts. You go into a partnership with your best friend, or you go into a partnership with your spouse, uh, or a girlfriend, or a boyfriend, and after a few months, you know, you fall apart and you don't know how to deal with the business and who is responsible for what and what to do if one partner wants to get out of this partnership. So it's very important to have a legal contract. Um, there are many partnerships in different fields, but they are very popular in professional services. So when you watch a, a movie and they talk about a law firm where I want to make a partner, that's what they're talking about. So a lot of law firms and accounting firms and dental practices and medical practices they are partnerships so often you go to your doctor and there's two or three different doctors that work together uh, to serve more customers and they form a partnership together as i mentioned uh, a legal contract uh, between or among partners is very important and this is what partners must agree upon A corporation, it could be publicly traded or privately owned. Publicly traded meaning their stocks, shares of stocks are sold to the public through the stock exchange. So you and I can buy them. Uh, most of the big corporations are publicly traded. Privately owned, an example would be uh, Burger King or Hilton, uh, where you are, uh, the public cannot buy their shares of stock. Only a specific list of individuals or entities can purchase uh, shares of stock. And um, the, the uh, owners are separate, I'm sorry, the actual entity, the corporation is separate from its owners and has a legal right to own property and do business in its own name. A corporation has the same legal rights as a human being. Uh, and stockholders are not responsible for the debts and taxes of the business. So if I buy shares of stock at Apple, I only can lose the amount of money I invested into those shares. I am not going to be responsible for the debts and taxes of Apple uh, in comparison to a sole proprietorship or a partnership. And so, the, again, it's a legal organization with assets and liabilities separate from those of its owners because the owners are millions and millions and millions of stockholders. And so this is the advantages. The biggest advantage is that limited liability, right? As a stockholder, I love buying shares of stock because my liability is limited only to what I invested. I am not legally responsible for the company's debts or taxes. And these are disadvantages uh, it's uh, harder to dissolve. It takes longer and more expensive to establish than a sole proprietorship. And there is a double taxation tax disadvantage. And this is a definition of shares of stock. Uh, as I mentioned, for, from, legal, from a legal perspective, um, the sole proprietorship and partnership are the same as the owners. The entity and the owners legally are the same. The corporation is separate. But for accounting purposes in this class, all forms of business entities are considered separate entities. So we have to use this assumption. We must use it. We will use it. It's called the separate entity assumption. So every, let's say I have two small businesses I own and I also teach and work for somebody. So I have W2, that's my salary, I'm an employee, that's my income, and I have incomes from my consulting business and from my training business. So all of those three incomes come to me and legally I, my incomes will be added up and I'm responsible for both of my businesses. But financially, accounting, bookkeeping has to be done separately for one business from another business and separate from my personal finances. Because otherwise, we would not know, I as the owner, I would not know how each of my businesses is doing. So if I use a car for personal 
reasons and I use the same car for my business, I have to estimate the percentage of time and only assign the, you know, if I use it 40% for my business, the 40% of assets value will be recorded in my business. If I establish the business and I pay my investment, I transfer money from my personal account to my business account. I have to open that business. I don't have to, but it's strongly advisable to open the business account and I transfer my, let's say, $100,000 from my personal checking account to my businesses. So you and I will be doing books for the business. So when the owner invests $100,000 for the owners personally, it's a deduction in cash. It's a minus to cash. But we will not be doing books for the owner. We're doing the books for the business. So we will view it as the increase in cash. We, the business, receive $100,000 from the owner. So our cash goes up. And vice versa, when the owner takes money out of the business for personal expenses, to the business it will be deduction. To the owner herself or himself, it will be an increase. But we are doing books under the separate entity assumption. Okay, guys, GAP. GAP are the rules. Again, it stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. Not the brand name of the clause, but G-A-A-P. This is the U.S. set of rules for the United States. There is a different set of rules for the rest of the world um, that we will be using. This is what we are studying, and we will be doing books using these rules. I'm not going to go into so much detail here, but... Gaps are the standards in accounting. They are developed by this Financial Accounting Standards Board. I mentioned it in the first part of the video. It's called FASB. So who oversees GAP? It's the government. It's the federal government through the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, that we again defined in the previous video. But the SEC does not necessarily have expertise in accounting. So they appoint a private, private, not government, private, which makes them more independent, private nonprofit group of seven accounting gurus. So these people are elected, I think, for four years and they can serve two consecutive terms and then they have to uh, change. Uh, and these are, you know, professors of accounting, accountants that work in the industry, accountants that prepared financial statements for other companies, that did taxes and investments for other companies. So this is seven gurus for B of, of accounting. And they get together and whenever there is a problem um, mm, taking place in how to approach this accounting uh, idea or concept, they issue their decisions and everybody has to follow them. They have to be adhered by public corporation. So if you're a small mom and pop shop, you don't have to follow GAP. But as soon as you want to get a loan at the bank and you run to the bank and you show your financial statements, if those statements are not prepared in accordance with GAP, nobody will give you a loan. So theoretically, a small business doesn't have to follow GAP. But all of them that are growing up, becoming bigger and are more successful start following GAP as soon as they need to start borrowing money. Uh, the auditor's report is uh, a company, it's an independent account, it's, uh, it's an independent accountant's audit or review of the company's financial statement. So before the public corporation files their financial statements with the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, and could be distributing, could be opening up their financials to the public. So if it's a public corporation, you and I can just go on their website or the SEC website database called Edgar and look up their financial statements. But they have to be audited by an independent CPA firm. And so these independent auditors look at the financial statements and they say the statements adhere to GAP. That's the auditor's report. So I want to show you, I went online and I just went to Tesla. And this is the annual report called 10K that every public corporation files with the US SEC, Security and Exchange Commission. So this is their annual report, the most recent one. And um, 
Uh, it's for the year and the December 31st, 2019. And there is a lot of stuff here. I mean, you can see it's over 300 pages. But we're talking about this financial statement. So if I go to the financial statements, it begins, before I can look at financial statements, it starts with this, this is the auditor's report. It's the report of the independent registered public accounting firm. So this is the auditor's report. And it talks about adhering to generally accepted accounting principles. This is what the auditor's report is. It's usually quite short and you can see who their auditor is and it's PricewaterhouseCoopers which is one of the four largest CPA firms. And after that, then you can see the company's Tesla's balance sheet. This is the balance sheet. We're going to study it in chapter two. And they give data for two years, 2018, 2019. And then we can see the, um, this is the income statement. We will call it the income statement. They call it the consolidated statement of operations. So you can see their profit or net income right here. It's actually net loss. You can see that Tesla is experiencing net loss. It's decreasing, but still negative. And then it has uh, a consolidated statement of comprehensive loss. We're not going to talk about it. They have the consolidated statement of equity. We will talk about it, but ours will look much simpler. We will have a statement of owner's equity because we have only one owner in this class. And then the statement of cash flows which we will learn about in uh, financial and managerial accounting. Okay, so let's finish up. And I have a few questions. The blank and blank is an independent accountant's review of a firm's financial statements. I just defined it and it's called the, that's correct, auditor's report. Question number two, accounting standards developed and applied by professional accountants are known as GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. The business entity that can continue indefinitely is the, and I didn't mention it, but a corporation, because it has thousands and millions of owners, can really, excuse me, theoretically go on forever. Versus think about a sole proprietorship, it ceases to exist if the owner dies. The business entity that is commonly used in businesses that offer professional services is the partnership. Keeping the company's financial records separate from the owner's personal financial records is known as the, that's correct, separate entity assumption. And we will assume we're going to use it. We're always going to use it. And in a partnership, partners must agree upon each partner's share or percentage of ownership. That concludes chapter one. Thank you so much.